do that inner work on yourself. And like St. Seraphim says, you know, if you acquire the Holy Spirit, then thousands around you will be benefited and saved. Everything I do, it's not, I'm not trying to express myself. I'm not trying to express a new idea of, that I've come up with or something like that. I'm trying to point back to the Creator and to the depth and the wealth that we find in orthodoxy. When an artist creates a piece of art, he doesn't want you to glance at it and, and walk away necessarily. You're carrying out the traditions of the church through these art forms. Both music and visual, both of this, like, they're like, they affect our senses and helps us to focus on the main topic. I think it's something that I have to remind myself. Why do I do music? And it really is an offering back of the talent that I've been given. These are just revealing what's already present on an, on an inner level. They're an outward expression of that inner reality, which is the kingdom of God. Tikhon's monastery is America's oldest Orthodox monastery founded by St. Tikhon of Moscow in 1905. He went to various other places to try to find the suitable place and when he came here he said this is it. So he was very uh, enthusiastic and, and very uh, positive about not only the property but also the mission which was not only to have a monastery but a place of learning and pedagogy a place for people to to understand the Orthodox faith and to be able to teach other people everything springs from the liturgy everything comes from the liturgy. Every, everything comes from that really that perfect prayer of the liturgy which is prayer on behalf of all and for all it's it's a prayer for the entire world um, that tries to elevate and and somehow sanctify and, and assist the entire created world. My name is Hyra Deacon Mark. I studied art for most of my life. When I first came to St. Tikhon's, I emailed Father Sergius, the abbot, and I said, you know, I want to study iconography. So I've, I studied iconography here under a different artist, but now that we're starting this school, I feel like I can really take my skills to the next level and delve a little bit more deeply into learning iconography and the, the theology behind it. Uh, Anton and Ekaterina are two amazing people, highly talented, so it's just such an amazing blessing to have them here doing this. I'm really grateful. A school with their experience and expertise, it just doesn't exist in the West, so. We hope this school, this uh, beautiful new building, uh, will be not just school for learning, uh, but it will be some place for meeting, uh, for talking about uh, spiritual art, uh, about uh, modern iconography, and about everything around uh, sacral art. Both music and visual, both of this, like, they're, like, they affect our senses and helps us to focus on the main topic. And so, first of all, it should be beautiful. That's, like, common sense for music and for art. So, like, as Anton said, like, part of our goal will be to show what beauty is, because, like, people say, oh, that's beautiful. I said, look at this. Oh, that's much more better. When you have some background and you go to museum and you see how for example, Andrei Rublev was painting this icon. Like, first you just look and at this icon, look. You definitely understand that this icon is beautiful, but how, what was the technique? But then if you continuously return and you look and you look and you look, and then you start to understand. And when you start to understand, you start to be able to analyze it because your background helps you to analyze it. And then you start to apply that. Just classical training, sketches, 
still lives everything because if you're not able to depict that vase with that apple how dare you to depict face of christ you don't know how to do that cube and you think you know how to make nose it's like so all that study every day plus a lot of homework our school will welcome those people who really will dedicate their efforts to to study when they understand that it's just work, it's the same work like any other work, like gardening, that every day you come and you do something to that garden, then it's beautiful. Absolutely same story here. It's not about who you become, it's about what you produce. It's if you're really tired from strange stuff and you want to see beautiful stuff, you're welcome to come here. If you are ready to study, we will help you to achieve that. The hymnography is kind of like a, a an audio audio icon. It's a, it's like a it's like as a poem would be a verbal icon. So also the 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 hymnography is is this iconic form of 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 music where we actually kind of enter into kind of a deeper mystery through the hymnography of the church, which itself is inspired from above. So just as the the icons are inspired from above and they're trying to give us a vision of ineffable things, of things which are beyond and and of which we can't quite grasp, we can kind of touch and enter into through the icon in a similar way, but on a different level, we do that through the hymnography of the church. Beautiful, easy, not pressed chest voice that you could make all day long. Oh. Our music program offers an opportunity for Orthodox musicians to grow in their music skills while being immersed in the full liturgical life. Our schedule is very full, uh, but I hope rewarding <laughs> to our students. Class sizes are very small and, and that is intentional and necessary for the faculty to be able to really give attention to all the students and meet them where they are and help them grow and move forward with their skills. I think one of the great things about the residency program is that it, it's, there's so many different aspects to it. You get to conduct, you get to try composing, you get to do rehearsals, you get to um, like, I'm not even going to be able to remember everything, but take voice lessons and everything. And you're immersed in just the life that's happening here. Here at St. Ticon's, everything we're learning, we immediately apply. The services happen every day. You can go to liturgy every day. And so what you learn in class, you immediately receive real feedback from the services, confirming everything you're learning. And when you participate in the services, you're participating with what you had just learned that morning or the day before or the week before. Here, you're doing the job while you're doing the program and when you leave, you just continue the job. If you have a location to do the job, you just continue the job. And so the job kind of starts in the program. And so that's, that's how I've been prepared, prepared by doing the job even before graduating. Orthodox music in America needs people making music and it needs communities ready to receive that music and support the people making music. And what does St. Ticon's bring to that equation? It brings the training for the people who are going to be making the music. Music is like, it's like breathing. If you stop breathing, there's no more life. If you stop music, if you stop the, stop the art, the liturgy, it ceases to be. God breathed into every human being the spirit of life. And that's what we have to do. We have to breathe into our Orthodox liturgical life, our real Christian experience, more art. And St. Ticon's hopefully will continue to prepare more and more people to go out and to breathe art <laughs> into everything. Because that that's how you stay alive.
one person said that the greatest discovery of the 20th century was the icon. That's Leonid Ospensky, because it's so deep. And in the same way, um, the liturgical tradition, especially the hymnography, the incredible depth, the richness, um, the variety, um, and really the, the capacity it has to change someone's heart and to change the world is wondrous. And they both provide us with that witness of the kingdom and also an entry point into the kingdom. And if we're properly disposed and living, um, you know, trying to live according to the commandments in the life of the church, they provide that door and they begin to inform the heart and into to the vision of God. And this vision is salvation for us as Orthodox Christians. This is our mission. This is the mission of St. Tikhon of Moscow. This is our purpose here at the monasteries is to elevate and bear witness to that deep culture of the church which saves us.